Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one we're taking a look at something pretty unique, a one-off GTX 980. Now when I purchased this on eBay, I thought it may have been an engineering sample because it was described as a 980 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. And as you know, any model GTX 980, no matter the card you buy, ships with just four. If you want more VRAM, the 980 Ti is available with six gigs, but nowhere in the world exists a 980 with 8 gigs, and the whole thing was a bit of a mystery to me, especially as the description was quite vague. So after it arrived, I got in contact with the seller, and I also got in contact with Nvidia, who told me two similar things. See, at first I thought this was an engineering sample, and so my concerns were around the legality of owning this and, of course, uploading a video. Turns out, though, that this is just a bit of a passion project. In fact, what the seller had done is actually replaced the memory chips themselves, and so this card has ended up with eight gigs of VRAM as opposed to the standard four. The memory chip model numbers, the little serial numbers, whatever you wanna call them, are different from the numbers stated in a lot of 980 reviews. Some of the reviews went into detail about the memory chips used, and this doesn't match up with any of them. This is a pretty unique product for that reason, probably the only one in the world unless someone else has decided to do the same thing. And although I found it pretty impressive, I don't think Nvidia shared my enthusiasm. I find this car pretty interesting nonetheless, and today I want to see how it performs. So we'll get into that first, and then we'll discuss its performance in comparison to a standard four gig GPU. Okay, so this 980 is basically the same spec-wise. We've got the same bus width, the same memory bandwidth. The only thing that's changed is the amount of VRAM, eight gigs instead of four. Starting off with our first game, Cyberpunk 2077, and here we have the medium crowds and textures with everything else set to lowest. All of today's games were tested at 1080p. The 980 is still a very capable card, of course, providing you are realistic with your expectations. And in Cyberpunk, we saw 56 FPS with a 1% low of 40 and a 0.1% low of 42. Red Dead Redemption 2 then with the ultra textures and everything else set to medium gave us 57 FPS on average with a 1% low of 47 and a 0.1% low of 45. For Forza Horizon 5, we use the high preset with TAA enabled by default for an average of a very nice 69. The 1% low was 56 and the 0.1% low was 55, so no stutter here or any frame drops to speak of with this one. In Hogwarts Legacy, which is one of the more demanding games tested today, at 1080p medium with TAA set to low, we saw 52 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 41 and a 0.1% low of 31. Spider-Man with the medium preset and TAA gave us 62 FPS with the 8 gig 960, 980, sorry, 47 FPS as a 1% low and a 0.1% low of 42. So again, another nice result with some consistent frame times here. Next up for The Last of Us at 1080p with the lowest preset, 44 FPS was the average with a 1% low of 38 and a 0.1% low of 35. You can see in games like this, they do try and allocate more VRAM and because we have it with this card, more VRAM is being allocated. But I think one of the bigger limitations is the actual power of the 980, the actual performance it can offer VRAM doesn't necessarily help here. In The Witcher 3, with 1080p in the high preset, with TAAU and SSAO, we saw 66 FPS. We can push things to ultra, but there will be more dips below 60. 54 was the 1% low, and the 0.1% low was 51. So even in and around those busier areas, the game still hold up fairly well. Finally, then we have Fortnite at 1080p with 100% risk scaling and TAA. I'd recommend turning things down for Fortnite in order to remain at your most competitive, but it certainly looks good at high, I must say, even if it's probably not worth playing at such settings. 74 FPS on average with a 1% low of 59 and 0.1% low of 49. Now then, let's get into some comparison results using some of the more demanding games tested today. Okay, so I've thrown together this little XL graph, this table here. I apologize that the formatting isn't uh, the best, but Excel isn't something I use very often, as you can probably tell. So the standard GTX 980 that I tested a while ago was the ASUS Strix OC model. Bear that in mind. This one is just a custom reference model with eight gigs of VRAM instead of four. I've thrown a few games into this, the ones that I have comparative figures for, and I thought we'd go through them now. So starting with Cyberpunk, 
and we saw an average of 54 FPS with the 4 gig 980, a 1% of 40, and a 0.1% of 36. With our custom 8 gig card, we saw an improvement to the average of 2 frames per second, but where things improved the most were with those percentile lows. This was a more consistent experience with the card that has the extra VRAM added. Now this definitely wasn't the story throughout as you can see for the next few results. With Red Dead 59 FPS average with the 4 gig standard card, 57 with the 8 gig card, this could just be due to the reference model being clocked lower of course, but I can only compare what I had on hand. In Forza Horizon 5 the averages were the same and the percentile lows were pretty much identical give or take a margin of error. Um, Hogwarts Legacy, 52 FPS for the standard 4 gig 980 with a 1% low of 40 and a 0.1% low of 35. Again, the figures were pretty similar. If anything, the 0.1% low with the 8 gig card came in a little bit lower. For Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, 62 FPS on average with a 4 gig 980. Still a very respectable card in 2023 in my opinion. The 1% low was 47 and the 0.1% low of 41. Similar figures with our custom 980 GPU with 8 gigs of RAM here. Um, the 0.1% figure was slightly higher, but again, I call this within margin of error territory. Now, The Last of Us is the last game I tested for comparison here. And just like Cyberpunk, this can be very demanding. All of the above games can, but this one is particularly demanding when it comes to that VRAM utilization. So 43 frames per second for a standard 4 gig 980. The Custom 8 gig card did 1 FPS better, margin of error territory, but where we saw the most notable changes was with those percentile lows once again. In fact, it was that 0.1% low where we saw quite a big difference in compar comparison to that original 980, 35 in comparison to 26. So I think going forward, as games start to become more and more VRAM intensive, this custom 8 gig card may hold on a little bit better, but for the most part in gaming tests anyway, I didn't see anything that made me think, well, there's a significant difference here, but I do admire what the seller has done to this 980. I think it was a pretty cool passion project, and I think going forward it'll be interesting to see just how games differ in their performance when using an 8GB 980 in comparison to the 4GB card. So that's something I'll have to keep an eye on moving forward, I think. All that's left to say now though is thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this look at this one-off custom unique GTX 988GB. If you did, leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and for anyone watching from Nvidia, Nvidia's legal team, anything like that, if any problems do arise with this video, just let me know and uh, I'll, uh, I don't know, remove it if I have to I guess. Uh, they've, they've given me the all clear so everything should be good but yeah. I think we're okay, but there we go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.